Okay, Pamela, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. You wanted to add something? I did. Um, one of the things that I noticed, the successful applicants, uh, we would, where we were positioned in the building, we could actually see people drive up and then drive away. And so what that told us was that those people were concerned about knowing where to go and being on time. And so you, uh, we would actually keep a record of who did this process. I think there were more than one. There was more than one person who did this. In addition, I would um, expect that an applicant would go over their clothing choices very carefully. Um, modesty in dress is important, especially in a customer service envoy position. We don't serve um, people with any sort of untoward services. And so this needs to represent the professional services that we're about to, to provide. Um, there were a couple of people who presented themselves in that sort of off-putting manner. And I don't really think they thought through their wardrobe selection as carefully as the successful people did. So obviously, you took all that into account. I want to go back a step. And before you and your partner uh, conducted the interviews, mm -hmm. you put together what, what I know is proprietary, but uh, a grid of what you were looking for and how you were going to um, evaluate the candidates. Um, yes, we did. If you would, um, just walk us through each area and how it was that you were going to evaluate people, and then we'll talk about the interview process itself and how you scored people, et cetera. Thanks. Nope. Sure. Um, so we have a basic uh, section involving communication, and that would be anything from written communication, and again, that goes back to their resumes and how they articulated their visions for themselves, their history, their interests, um, Verbal communication, that is all going to be um, occurring right there in the interview, although I have to tell you, it also occurs outside when they first greet, are greeted and uh, they're first welcomed into the interview room. Um, and then eye contact is very important. Uh, so all of that goes into a section that would be called, you know, personal communication skills. Along with that is uh, uh, level of personal presentation. In other words, is this person, again, we go back to modestly dressed, professionally dressed, put together well. Um, this doesn't have to be the best looking person. That's not what I'm talking about. But this person is confident that they are presenting themselves in the best manner. Um, confidence goes a long way uh, for, for that. Um, again, then we're going to talk about did they research the company? Did they research the position? Um, and by that, I mean, do they have an idea of how this position would fit into the overall company description that occurs on or presents itself on the website? Um, do they have any direct and relevant experience? Um, that is not only going to be uh, told, that story is going to be told on the resume, that story is going to be told in person as well. And so are they prepared to, to tell that story and are we engaged in that story? Um, this person, we also want to know, do they have five-year goals for themselves? Are they working on professional skills projects currently? What are those projects that they're working on? And who, uh, who are they seeking out in terms of gaining those skills? Is it a self-study or is it um, study outside of themselves? Do they have a mentor? Uh, things like that. I would also, let's see, we want to know, did they ask impactful questions? And that's a spur of the moment thing that's going to be left up to them. Um, certainly during the interview process, during the entire interview, people can ask questions. They're not necessarily interrupting the interviewer, but they're asking follow-up questions based on the conversation. An interview really is a conversation. It isn't a question and answer. If it becomes a question and answer, one of the things that we noticed, uh, myself and my fellow interviewer, is those were the hard ones. Those, mm -hmm. those were the ones where we were sure that person was not going to get this job because it was just too much work. And we thought if it was 
that much work in the interview, it was going to be a lot more work trying to manage them on the job, if you know what I mean. Yes. Yeah. Um, what we did, uh, in addition to laying out this, this grid and, and identifying those most important aspects for this job, is we then crafted a set of questions to elicit the responses that would demonstrate these. And while we didn't read from those questions, we did prepare those questions two days before the interview started. And then we revisited those questions the day before so that we were sure that we were prepared. It's not enough for the applicant to be prepared. The interviewer also has to be prepared. So it's a really great point. I don't think we often think of how does an employer prepare, but <laughs> preparation on your side is so very important, uh, which you have just demonstrated. Yeah, we, yeah you could, uh, we could have gotten that really wrong if we hadn't. Um, one of the things that we were interested in doing was selecting a person who would be able to grow with this company. We believe in the future of the company, and so this is not just a fill a spot. This is somebody who would be able to, we could see that they would be here in 10 years, filling an even bigger role than the one that they're stepping into now. So this is really about a career with your company, not just filling a job, yes. which is so often the case, which is, I think, one of the reasons why you asked, uh, what are your five-year goals or how are you developing yourself for the future, which... Frankly, I don't ever recall being asked in an interview, so that, that's a really uh, great question to give a lens into the person's thinking for the future and seeing this as a career move, not just to fill a job. Well, and, you know, we have um, skilled workers who are drivers, truck drivers, CDL drivers, um, emergency spill responders. And while you might think that perhaps we would not be so interested in whether or not they considered uh, this a potential career and that we were just filling a job. The truth is, if we can establish um, the employment relationship so that they might consider this a possible career, uh, we will have less training costs, we will have uh, a happier workforce, we can establish a culture and, and continue to enforce that culture and not have to restart it all the time. I, I think that the benefits of Hiring for career versus hiring for jobs is, is very apparent from the employer side. And so as folks are, as applicants are looking at ads, um, I know that there's no guaranteed for life employment anymore. I'm hip to that. I haven't worked in the same job <laughs> my whole career either, uh, except what I do know is if you can't see yourself there much past five years, you're probably in the wrong place. Hmm. Okay, I think I interrupted you. Let's go back to the final things on the grid and then let's actually talk about the candidates you interviewed. Sure, 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 sure. Um, so we're going to be looking at, uh, let's see, I talked about personal presentation. We were looking for enthusiasm. We were also looking at, um, did the person, the, the applicant, answer our questions with examples from their previous employment, not just answer the question? So, for example, if you asked a person, are you familiar with customer service and what the goals are in, customers, in a customer service position, the person who is asked that question can certainly say, well, yes, of course I am. You know, in my previous job, I answered phones all the time and I um, arranged things all the time and I answered questions and I made calls. And, and the activity, while relevant, isn't as interesting as if a person gave us a story about solving a problem or overcoming a challenge in a previous job. And we've all done that. We've all had challenges in our previous job. What did we do to solve the problem is really the question. What is the story behind it? So I'll give you an, a, an example from about two hours ago. I was connect, my computer was connected to a bank of uh, 
cubicles that did not have power to it any longer, that we didn't know that. So we thought the computer had died. Well, the computer didn't die. Uh, I found myself in the, in the closet with the breaker box with the electrician going through each of the breakers to determine which breaker had tripped. And it turned out that wasn't the issue anyway. So there has to be a professional uh, electrician that comes in. But my point is we all have challenges and obstacles that show up that look far beyond what our scope of responsibility is and how we address those and how we get those done and how quickly they get resolved really is important. And I'd like to hear a story about how somebody did that. And, um, you know, we'll get into, I'm not going to use her name, but we did end up selecting the customer service envoy from a group of people. And she tells the story about how uh, when she was getting ready to give a presentation, she noticed that the room that she was giving the presentation in wasn't as tidy as she would have liked. And so rather than finding the people who normally keep the room tidy, she got a dustpan and a broom and cleaned up the mess. And that told us a lot of things. One is she's committed to the job and getting the job done. And we all can say that, but she demonstrated that in her story. I was also swept away to, uh, swept away, that's, that's amusing. I was in the room with her while she was describing sweeping the floor. And so I imagined that our customers will be as delighted to be in the room with her, listening to whatever she has to say, and yet she wasn't overbearing and on top of that. She had provided us just enough information, so, and the story was compelling enough to get us completely enrolled that she was the person. So. What a surprise that someone would... would rise to the top by telling a story about cleaning up a room before a presentation. I mean, yes. and, and pretty extraordinary, right? And it was very casual and I didn't uh, feel any artifice. I didn't think that she had uh, either made up the story or figured out that that would impress us. It was genuine and you could see that in all of the other examples that she used and all of the descriptions of her sister's diesel shop. And her, so there was, there was also some, uh, so I'm mentioning the sister's diesel shop because we were concerned about culture and we were concerned that the culture fit, you know, we're not IBM. And so not everybody is going to be comfortable working with us. Um, and so the, the description of the diesel shop told us that that actually, this will fit. If you, if, yeah. Yeah. And any other criteria on your grid that we want to mention before you talk about the interviews that you conducted? We wondered uh, and asked if they had established systems for organization. In other words, how do they keep themselves organized and what systems do they use? If um, the person, everybody likes to tell their potential employer that they're organized. Nobody would say that they're disorganized except if you drill down and ask them what are the systems that you use to, to accomplish that, you'll actually find out if they are in fact organized or just hope to be someday. And um, <laughs> one, of the, uh, one of the things that got revealed is I'm working on that myself. I, I don't have as many systems as a lot of people do. Um, so I'm, I'm working on that. I think that the only other thing that I failed to mention is that, no, I think we're done. Okay. okay. So, Pamela, you just mentioned something that I think you had told me previously about that I found fascinating, mm -hmm. which was your willingness as an interviewer to share something you're working on in your professional development as an entree to make it safe and comfortable for your applicants to yes. share about that. Yes. And uh, yeah, thanks for reminding me on that. And this is the area that I'm presently working on and it has to do with organization. I am not one who likes to complete, well, I haven't been one who likes to complete a file, a project and put it away. It, it sort of lingers and um, it gets messy and then it gets unorganized in my workspace. 
And that, frankly, doesn't work very well given the numbers of tasks and the numbers of, I've got six companies that I represent. They're, this is a collection of companies. I really need to put my things away in an orderly fashion. And so I, in order to accomplish that, had requested and just received this morning a file cabinet uh, that has a particular, um, you know, it's fireproof and it's legal size and all those things that you would expect, except they've never had one before. So now they have one and I will be using it. And um, it's not something that I've been very good at in the past. And so, yes, all of the applicants found that out about me. Um, and I'm not going to share the other interviewer's deal because I think that's his to share. That's not mine to share. <laughs> but, but hopefully we made it more comfortable for people to actually tell us what they were working on. And um, we were a little surprised that there are some people who aren't working on anything. <laughs> that, that they self-selected themselves out of this position. Because frankly, if you're not moving forward, you're probably sliding back. Yes, how true. We say that in our career self-management <laughs> specialization all the time. Okay. Not moving forward if you're not being the CEO of Enterprise U, taking responsibility for your own career and leaving it up to somebody yes. else. Uh, yes. You're not moving forward. So, very good. So, let's talk about... Um, you've t conducted 20 interviews and we don't have time to talk about all of those, but please give us the highlights, um, kind of the ones who dropped out very quickly because of something and then how you ultimately made the decision. Sure. So um, one of the people that dropped out very fast was someone who talked incessantly. And we were pretty sure that this person wanted us to know certain information about himself, uh, about him. And, and I, that was obvious because he kept talking, but it was pretty apparent that he wasn't listening to our questions. He was just talking. And uh, it, it's kind of like watching some of those debate performances in the, uh, in the presidential race <laughs> this season, where you're pretty sure that this person is going to say this no matter what the question is. And we were fairly certain that that was going to occur for him as well. And so because uh, he wasn't willing to relate to us, to, get to, to go back to the relationship concept, he was not going to be, um, we were not confident that he was going to be willing or able to relate to anyone else, certainly not our customers. So that was one person that selected themselves out really quickly. Um, another was just the opposite. And I think I intimated uh, about this just a bit ago, which is there was a woman who had made us work so hard to complete the interview. She, she would give us three and four word answers to questions that we thought deserved a lot more thought. And um, she never really, we never got to know her at all. Mm. Uh, and it was hard work. So she, she selected herself out. Um, and someone else gave us a, a story about a situation that she's currently involved with and her handling of the information that she was talking about actually is illegal. And so she selected herself out as well. Now, we didn't point out the illegality, but we were alarmed and um, thought that she couldn't really be trusted with our client or our client's information. Um, one of the things that I should tell you too is this position requires a non-compete agreement and a non-disclosure agreement um, having to do with the importance of mm -hmm. our customer's information. And so if a person respected that and, and appreciated the importance of that, uh, they were more likely to move on, if you will. Um, but I did want to tell you that, so we, at the end of every interview, the person who was interviewing uh, with me and I would get together and we would talk about how the applicant scored on all of those different criteria and um, we would compare. And what was, what was uh, I think, surprising to both of us is that the person who bubbled up to actually get the job was so far ahead of second and third place that we were a little bit 
uh, concerned, I guess is the right word, about what we would do if, in fact, she had turned us down. Because while there was a second and third place, those people were pretty close together. The person who rose to the top was so far above the other people that we were pleased that it seemed like an easy process. The only thing we were concerned about was, would this person actually accept the job? And in fact, she did and, uh, you know, just recently started. And um, so far, it's working great. So how did she do it? What was so fabulous about her? How did she become head and shoulders above everyone else? Well, as I was telling you uh, about the person who was sweeping the floor, she was the person who ultimately got the job. And it was not only the content of her stories, but it was the fact that she answered them in stories. She answered the questions by engaging us. And her ease uh, told us that she would be an easy oh. person not only to include in our work but also to include in our customers' workplace. So it was, um, so it was a, a temperament that she had. There was um, excitement in her voice. There was engagement in her stories. There was a true appreciation of what it is to be a servant based on her descriptions of what she's done in the past and uh, what her willingness to do for us was in the future. And I don't know if that makes sense, but she described her interest in her safety training from the past that was years ago. It was 10 years ago, but her interest in bringing those skills current and then providing that as an additional skill, even though that wasn't in the job description. So she was looking far into the future and that was compelling. And it sounds like um, she won you over by her preparation, yes. by her background, by her skills, competencies, and abilities, um, and presenting them in such a way that you were, as you kept saying, engaged and really interested. It was like you really want to know this um, person more and more and could see that she would be a good fit for your team. That's correct. And I think she did a better job than what I just did with her just now. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I think engagement was a key. I think the skills absolutely had to be there. And um, she was one of the people who noticed the hot sauce pictures on the website. So there, there wasn't um, any um, mistaking that she had prepared for this. Mm -hmm. And you had prepared as well, you and your, your colleagues. So we've learned about this from both sides, from the employer's side as well as from the applicant's side. What would you consider kind of some takeaway messages for the thousands of students who'll have the privilege of watching this interview that will hopefully spur them on in their own careers? I would ask them to be authentic in their um, consideration of the job ad and if if the job ad doesn't call to you skip over it there are many jobs out there even though it doesn't seem as though there are there really are be sure that the job that you're responding to is one that you would actually think that you would like and then ask yourself why is that and then be able to articulate that because one of the things that you will be asked in the interview is, why are you applying for this job? And you need to know the answer to that. And it shouldn't be something that you just pull out and answer every time. This is going to be an authentic response to the question, why are you applying to this job? That would be the first thing that I would say. I would say, again, um, the preparation that you do, um, both in terms of your communication and what it is that you want to impart and how it is that you want to sell yourself needs to be spot on. And if you need to go over that with a family member or a friend, do that. Practice. Um, tell them the questions that you anticipate. Mm -hmm. And then have them uh, give those questions to you so that it is a conversation and not just this question and answer experience because that's going to be unpleasant for the, for the interviewer. Um, 
ask yourself why you want to work for this company. And if you don't know, try to find out. And if you end up not knowing, you could probably ask them that question yourself. You could find out from them why it is that you might want to work there. Um, that seems awkward, but it really is a two, it's a two-sided conversation. This is something really important to the employer, almost as much and maybe even sometimes more important than it is to the applicant. Mm. Keeping that in mind, this is a definitely a conversation and it's the establishment of, as you would say, the employment relationship and hopefully career um, from both sides. Wow, what a great note to end on. Thank you so much, Pamela, for being with us. Uh, it's been an outstanding conversation, a great dialogue, and I appreciate you kind of taking us behind the curtain of what an employer goes through and um, bringing people into their companies. So thanks so much. All the best. Thank you very much.